in the Enoch's is significant. The distinctions that we have in the Enoch um, is significant. So as we were saying, that in Genesis chapter 4 is basically masonry 101. It's basically it's basic masonry 101 with special emphasis to um, verse verse uh, what is it, 16. Verse 16. This verse right here where it says and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord went out from the presence of Yahweh and dwelt in the land of Nod or the land of wandering. And so we've touched on the 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 Cainite or Cain's son Enoch. Cain's son Enoch. And now Cain has a special significance in the first chapters. I want you to get this because I'm, I'm getting this too. And it's really helping to simplify this whole, you know, Masonic mumbo-jumbo, you know, when we put it within Ethiopic, you know, put in the Ethiopic context. But they've tried a lot of um, inferiority programming, you know, to make us look down on Ethiopia, down on ancient black culture, and to be, like, dubious of, like, Ethiopia's ancient Judaic and biblical 3,000-plus-year um connection, you know, and even at the root of the Bible and the whole Hebraic story is really the black Jews or the Ethiopian Hebrews. But here when you look at the sin of Cain, it says that accursed man, and this is from the Kibra Neges or the Queen of Sheba and her only son Menulik, it says, and that accursed man, Cain, Cain, the murderer of his brother, multiplied evil and his seed or his race his race did likewise, and they provoked Ha Elohim, the true and living God, to wrath with their wickedness. They had not the fear of Elohim before their eyes, and they never kept in mind that he had created them. Sounds like, you know, nowadays folk, you know, who are, who are godless heathen, and they never prayed to him. And they never worshipped him. We're speaking of the true God, not the whitewash antichrist, you know, not the not the image of the beast, the blonde hair, blue eyed image of the beast. And they never called upon him, the true God, and they never rendered service to him in fear or in reverence. Nay, they ate and they drank and they danced and they played upon stringed instruments and sang lewd songs there too. So now in this whole music industry exposed, when you now connect this from the Kibra Neges, that they sang what? Lewd songs there too. So it's nothing new what we see going on with these so-called musical um, artists, you know? And they worked on cleanness without law or being lawless to Jah's law without measure and without rule. And the wickedness of the children of Cain, of Cain, multiplied until at length in the greatness of their filthiness, they introduced the seed of the ass into the mirror. So we're, we're once again at this present point in time. Because the Almighty says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. But many of these things that took place in the beginning were not well known, much less well understood. You know, they were not well known, much, much less well understood by previous um, so-called uh, generations of humanity because of the suppression of the word, especially in, in, in the Western, the, you know, the Western Gentile or Eurocentric cultures. And this is one of the reasons why when we're speaking about the book of Enoch, we have to make the, the point that there's two Enochs. There are two Enochs. This is very, very fundamental. This is at the very, this is the key cookie cutter code, you understand, to deciphering the matrix because Genesis chapter 4 is basically Masonry 101. And if you ask yourself, why do these so called free um, uh, Masons 
why do they glorify Cain and, and Cain's children? Why is that part of their so-called mystery? Because this is the mystery of iniquity. Now, when we get to Lamech, all these begots, remember, this is the lineage of Cain, of Cain. Jude, the one chapter in Jude now points out in the end times that these lawless ones, that these disagreeables to Jah law in this present time are the children of disobedience, but are named the children of Cain or Cain, the children of Cain. And K is red in the Amharic, and Oin is I, so you have Kain, 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 Kain is red eye, and the red eye, symbolic of red eye and envious and red eye and, and jealous. And this is exactly the nature of Kain. And then when we continue here, it says the wickedness of the children of Kain multiplied, as it's multiplying in the so-called last days of this um of this uh false false demiurge until at length in the greatness of their filthiness they introduce the seed of the ass into the mirror. So now we have all of this um manipulation and hybrid hybrid hybridization that we have going on with the ass the seed of the ass into the mare, and the mule in, came into being. So now this is where the mule, and the mule is, is sterile, you understand, is sterile. And there's something to that when we start to connect some of these um, so-called um, uh, Duma Daddy, you know, Duma Daddy, <laughs> um, you know, what would they call themselves, the, the unilluminated ones who falsely, misbelieve that they are illuminated, but the only illuminator is the King of Kings and his Christ, the true illuminati, the true illuminator. And you find that even in the the Vulgate version of the the uh, Bible in Matthew is it John's is John's what John's would speak about the true light, the true the true lux. You understand? The true lux. The true lux is not so-called the Lucifer that you are made to believe. And we pointed this out before, and we'll point this out again, that Lucifer is a false name. And when I say a false name, it's a Latin name. It's not there in the Hebrew. It comes from the Latin. And it being associated with the being who f fell from glory, speaking about the fallen angel, known as Satan. Satan is his name after the fall, and Lucifer is the name before. But he was not the true light. He was one light. He was one light, one of the morning stars, and the morning star that fell from his glory, who they call Venus now, when you look into their so-called um, um, uh, Kabbalistic um, the Kabbalistic teachings, and we'll go into this a little bit more, but let's just get through this point right here. So God had not commanded for such a being as the mule to come into being, but the children of Cain, they obviously understood enough genetics, even, was this five, six, some say 7,000 years ago? They understood enough genetics. So we're not we're not rising up to any level that humanity has not been on, even despite all the modern technology. But a lot of the ancient technology has been suppressed and been studied by the, the, the rulers and their scientists and the men and people and their human accomplices until they were able to replicate it, get enough understanding to replicate it. So even like those who give their children who are believers, notice this in connection with the Whitney Houston thing, that those who give their children who are believers or who have faith, you understand, and basically innocent, but they have faith in Jesus, they have faith in Yeshua. But these are like the children of Cain who give their children who are believers to those who deny God. And you see that written, all, written large in the Whitney Houston situation. And their offspring become like the seed of the filthy Gomorrahites, the Gomorrahites. Or, 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 or the, the Vulcans, because Gomorrah, Gomorrah is a mountain, and 
symbolic of Sodom and Gomorrah, a mountain eruption, which is also one of the signs. One half of them being of good, and one half of them being of evil seed. This is where we get the mix-up moods and added to. This is where we get where, where, where John says he would choose one, you know, of a family, or he would choose, you know, why you try to convince those who may be your fleshy, but they don't get it because they're of the different, of, of the other half. And as for those who do this wickedness, their judgment is ready and the error, the error is lasting. And then it, it, it goes further now. This is the sixth, the sixth uh, chapter concerning the sin of Cain. But let's get back. Let's go forward right here where we were just explaining about the Zalanoch. Yeah, Zalanoch here says father of those who dwell in tents. But here it says those who are transients. Transients is this word, Zalanoch or, or um, nomads. Now his brother... You understand? And we're speaking about Jabal. Now we have Jubal. Jubal, you know, in the, the three Jews in masonry. Jubala, 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 right? And he was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. Now this is interesting. He was the one of the harp and the organ. Now, this might not seem like much, you know, when we talk about musical instruments, but notice the real musical instrument, the real gift of, of, of the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, the true creator, the true God, if you please. The real gift is, 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 is the human voice, is the human instrument. So when we praise Jah, we don't really need, you understand, any other, you know, instrument because he has given us the very instrument. But what Satan even introduced from the beginning was certain musical instruments, you know what I'm saying, where man began to worship, man's worship became subordinate to their own handicraft, to what they crafted from their own hands. So today we have so-called praise and worship music. WTF, excuse me, do you know there's a big difference between what the, the, the real old-time Negro spiritual was a church house. It was almost like Naya Bingi, and they were, with their feet, they were making the beat, and they were chanting and singing with their voices, making melody to the King of Kings and his Christ. E e Ovis. But now, as we go a little bit further now, from Cain to Tubal Cain, we have verse 22. Verse 22 says, And Zilla, and Zilla, <laughs> she also be a Tubal Cain, to Baal Cain, an instructor, it says in the King James Bible, of every artificer in brass and iron. So now we're getting the basic elements of the craft. This is one of the reasons why the Masons refer to this area of scripture in their lore, in their fable. The Masonic fable refers to the Genesis chapter 4 is 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 a very beloved of the so-called free Masonic um, um, Satanistic clique. And he was an artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. And Lamech said to his wives, Ida and Zilla, and Ida is using the daughters of Electra, is the first woman, the five women are the, are the, um, template types for the the woman of Freemasonry or of the Masons, so it's the so called Freemasons and Ada of the of the daughters of Electra or something to that effect. You know, when they have the five pointed star upside down. Um she's one of the first right there. Now Lamech he says why they choose her over Zilla and not Zilla too, you know, is somewhat of their own mystery. But Lamech said to his wives, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken to my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Now, this is said to be on some level some um, 
some some deep mystery here, especially among the Freemasons, and some say even there's some Jewish um, Talmudic um, speculation on what happened here, you know, um, um, because he says, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, and that's what was said, the mark put on Cain, then um, truly Lamech 70 and sevenfold. Some speculate that when you look at the ruins, the so-called Zizi, like in Zizi Top or the the Nazi uh, double double um, thunderbolt, some say is, is symbolically seven T and sevenfold or seven times seven. In other words, some speculate that Tubal Cain slew his um, great 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 grandfather, something to that effect. You, you know, was, but what's very interesting. Is 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 the fact that many of the the key Masonic names refer to this, and there's a hidden mystery now when we touch on this Enoch right here, this Enoch that was the son of Cain versus the one who was seventh. Notice this the sevens, you know, the sevens here have a very interesting um, significance as well. Now the real the real matrix of the name, you know, when we get into the matrix, the real womb of the name, we get to the real roots of these names used, and we'll probably have to take that up in another, in another um, installment of this series. We'll touch on what does the metaphysical speak of Cain, and what does the metaphysical speak of this Hainok. You understand? There's, there's these two different. Enoch's. Remember, John D. created what he called Enochian, uh, some system that he called Enochian magic. And why did he call it Enochian? He developed some alphabet that he also called some Enochian alphabet. And this is a, a old etching. This is the old etching of the one, you know, the infamous um, John D. Avouch his stone is brought by um, Anglico, Anglico, you know, and, and we have Anglico, you have angels, notice that too, you know, for, at the root of Anglo, like Anglo-Saxon, you have angels is, is part of that root word, now this particular being, and notice he's wearing the Phrygian cap, he's wearing that freaking cap, you know, as well. You can see he has something that looks like a trident here where he's, or, or a compass, and there's a globe in his hand because it's with this particular magic. You know, now this is the superimposition of the demonic influence, you know, in the world and this particular magical system. So there's a very key connection with John D. And, um, both the, the sorcery witchcraft um, side of the, the so-called Illuminati and New World Order. But then there is a, a 180 degree opposite of that that we find to be the biblical and the scriptural truth. And the, the one who stretched forth her hands to God that received that is Ethiopia, is blameless Ethiopia is holy Ethiopia and we have within our documents the evidence to prove that so my brothers and sisters stay tuned I know we're kind of close on the time right here but we hopefully will pick up on this in another installation and um, check us out www.lojsociety.org live streaming